is Lynn Chen. Hi. She's fabulous and amazing. And sadly, I didn't get to do one scene with you in the movie. That's true. I should have ended up with her character at the end of the movie. You're right, Kadar. Part two. <laughs> Part two, the sequel. <laughs> um, so, you, as I was, I was talking a little bit um, about you in the segment with Kadar about this character, and I really, honestly, when I read the script, I was like, "Damn, whoever does this, this is a challenge." But you, you like, you made her funny and you made her interesting. And Jimmy? What happened to you? Prison's been known to change a man. I heard you were in a holding cell for two hours. I mean, I did a lot of thinking when I was serving time. I mean, Gwen, you were the best thing that ever happened to me, but I wanted to run the streets. But all I ended up doing was running the streets. What makes you think I want anything to do with a washed up ex-con? You think a dye job and a wardrobe change are going to make up for all the times you wronged me? No, no, wait, wait, Gwen. No, please, just, just give me a chance. You really going to treat me right? Yeah. And I am your girlfriend, not your bitch. I, I mean, maybe just around the boys, you know, so they don't think I went soft enough. Okay, let's get one thing straight here, Hamburglar. You're the one standing here begging me to take you back. Wait a minute, what, what are you saying? Like, now that makes me your... <laughs> when I read the script, I was like, this is not who I am at all. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> so let's see if I can do it. I, honestly, like, when I went into audition, I was like, <clears throat> there's no way I'm going to get this because she's so not me. Uh -huh. And I really feel like I'm, you know, like a child. I, I always feel that way when I play somebody who's not at all like me. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like I'm four years old putting on, you know, like the Annie outfit and running around singing tomorrow. Like it feels fake to me. And right. I feel like whoever is watching me is like, there's Seems a right. child. Okay. <laughs> there's a child <laughs> pretending to be an actor. Um, so, so I honestly didn't think I was going to get it. And um, I was very pleasantly surprised when I did. I'm not surprised. You're amazing. Thank you. Um, so, I know you've talked about Saving Face ad nauseum, or I'm sure you, I know you have, because the film was a hit, and, um, and you were showered with accolades and love and good reviews and good press, as well you should have been, because it's, it's honestly, I am, you know, most people who watch my video blog have been watching it for a while, and they know how utterly critical I am of lesbian content, lesbian movies, lesbian television, and Saving Face is, is one of my, it's in definitely my top three favorite lesbian films of all time. It's nice. And, and it, a lot, in big part, was because of you. Because, and, and that's what a lot of the reviews were, you know, talking about how good you were. And what were you, first of all, and I, I'm sure you've answered this question before, and I'm going to ask you a lot of questions that you've probably been asked before, but were you at all concerned playing a lesbian character? No. 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 Okay. Well, that's good. I was actually, I, I kept, I said, I've, I've said this a lot. Um, I was actually, when, when I read the script, I said, like, if they're going to get a straight actor to play this, there's no one else to play it other than me. Oh, hey. Yeah. That's, hey. well, and honestly, one of my biggest, one of my biggest criticisms when I'm watching lesbian content is that I don't buy that that person is gay. Like, mm -hmm. they don't have to be gay. But I need to feel like they're really in it, and that they're the, the I need to buy the attraction. And well, I, I didn't want it. it to be about it being gay, and of I knew that not. a lot of act, a lot of straight actors might have that, right? Um, you know, and especially um, especially being um, being Asian and having not many parts at the time um, yeah. offered to us. I shouldn't even say at the time. It Ever. Was, it's the same way now, but like having something, having an additional character layer right. um, isn't usually presented. Right. Um, so that was like, that was something that I, I, I felt like, I, that's why I have to do this. Yeah. No, I mean, it was a great script, but, but what I'm saying is, is that I bought it. I bought your attraction, I, I didn't question, I, I didn't see a straight actor playing gay, um, which is, is uh, to be quite honest, I do see that. And it's dangerous for a gay actor to say that because then I'm 
almost saying that we can't play straight mm -hmm. as believably. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't think that's true necessarily, but because we are a minority, different than other minorities, but there's still a, a stigma with, uh, you know, homosexuality, I still can sometimes see the actor hesitating just a little bit, or right. you can see a little bit of judgment, and I didn't see that at all with you. You started also a um, podcast for where um, you were spotlighting other actors, mm -hmm. and um, this pro will probably lead us um, logically into the last little bit of this, which um, I'm going to invite Kadar back for, but first, why did you start it? Um, the main reason I started, the podcast was called Actors Off, and it's about what actors do, working actors do when they're not working. Um, because. I had been meeting a lot of people in different, you know, very successful people and very, and, and my, a, a lot of my friends are successful actors, but I, I realized we don't really do much when we're not working. And I was getting a little bit, of, a bit sick and tired of going on red carpets and having people say to me, what are you doing? And the truth of the matter is nothing. Right. Um, but I can't say that right. because I get yelled at by my agent when I say that. So I have to make stuff up, and then I feel like the biggest phony. And I realized that was all people saw and heard when they read magazines, like, oh, I'm, I'm, you know, jetting off to Paris to shoot a land come at or, yeah. or something. And I'm like, why aren't I doing that? Uh, why am I sitting at home doing this? And and I realized, like, that's not really true. You're not doing that. Yeah. Um, I mean, for some people it is true, but, you know, for, for the most part, it isn't. You're sitting around doing nothing, and I was like, this is, I, I, I want to unearth something here. So I started this podcast, because I'm obsessed with podcasts, mm -hmm. and I just started interviewing people, um, and what I realized was, you know, it just, everyone's doing the same thing. Everyone. You know, I talked to some guy, the, this, the, um, the voice of, like, Food Network and, and, and Fox and all these things. He's been working forever, and, um, and he would say things like, oh, you know, it's not so bad, you know, I'll go like six months to seven months, you know, without a job, and for him it's normal. Whereas I'll talk to somebody who's just starting out, mm -hmm. and is like, I haven't worked for six months, I'm like ready to slip my wrists, you know, right. like, yeah, it, but, but it's all the same, and it's, it, it's, it normalizes everything. Yeah. Um, and I realized that, um, I realized that most, most of the actors I talk to, um, they don't for a second doubt that this is what they're supposed to do. I, I usually ask, like, do you think about quitting? And almost every one of them is like, no, hell no. Um, which is surprising to me because I definitely, I, since, I, since I've been five years old, I've gone on and off from acting. Mm -hmm. um, so, so it was interesting for me to, to realize that, mm -hmm. that um, part of... Uh, Part, that this is just a part of acting, right? Um, but maybe if it's not fulfilling you in that deep, deep way, uh, maybe you shouldn't be doing it, right? Because it's really hard. It is. It's really hard. It's, it's hard in that you never know when your next job is coming, and even even you know one of the things you you just were saying is that there's a perception that someone is uber successful, but the truth is is that most of the time they're not working, right? Like it, the you know the statistics are. What ninety at any one time ninety five percent of us are unemployed, and you know most of us make less than ten thousand dollars a year. When I, and by most of us I mean like ninety percent of us make less than ten thousand dollars a year acting. Yeah, that's that's the, the truth of it. You can't you can't. I think in order to be successful, you can't um, listen to the statistics. Yeah, you, you have to be a little bit crazy. You do. You do. Yeah, I mean, or otherwise you wouldn't do it. Yeah. Um, like, that'd be really stupid. Yeah. Uh, so you, ha you do have to, you know, fake it a little bit. You, you have and to. And convince yourself. But there's just so much faking and convincing. It's just tiring. It's exhausting.